No le dan la bola, prefieren ahora. Oh no, okay, I've got to do something to stop him. Invisibility cloak, it's time. Prefieren ahora para que venga desde esta zona. Penal, penal. No que penal. Yes. Come on, get in there. Manage to stop him. Yeah, nah, I see you, bro. You're, you're off. TTNL, I knew I should have kept it off. Yo guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. This is of course the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, Ed Sheeran surprised high school students with an impromptu performance. Imagine being told you're getting a surprise music act and Galway girl starts playing. I would drop out. These kids won't know what's hit them when they realise they've got to listen to The Shape of You. Meanwhile, Romelu Lukaku is getting straight to the studio, realising he can sell more EPs through school trips. This shit is wicked on these mean streets. None of my friends speak. And elsewhere in the news, a man got arrested for crushing his car into the Prime Minister's gates. The sat nav has done him dirty here, I can't lie. Go straight. Oh, okay, I, I guess. Now. I'll be honest, I doubt those in number 10 even noticed. Yeah, well, I say, did you hear something? No, not at all. Probably the sound of the poor. Now, on the topic of driving, and Manchester City booked a trip straight to the Premier League title. Yeah, mate, just to Manny, please. All right, boss, say no more. Nah, get me out of the car. Manchester City secured themselves a three-peat with a fifth Premier League title in six years after Nottingham Forest upset the odds to beat Arsenal 1-0. This sparked mass celebrations at the Etihad. <laughs> Oh, jeezy pips, man. The Gunners were barely a stress in the end. Pep Guardiola didn't lose a single hair over them. Well, I mean, he probably put his house on Manchester City winning the title. But if Ivan Tony does that, he gets an extra eight-month ban. All this after Mikel Arteta adopted a dog and brought him to training and named the dog Win to try and improve morale and motivation. Time to put those title celebrations on pause. That's another lead that I'm sure he's let go. Here we have Gabriel escorting the dog out of the Emirates. Meanwhile, Arteta's got a plan for the K9 tomorrow when no one's watching. It's time to reflect on Rob Holding in all of this. A reserve PE teacher at a secondary school at best. Ah, second. Right, too soon. You get it? Because too... Alexander Lacazette's trying to convince his former teammates to move to France after his great goal-scoring season. You should do what I did. Get into farming. But Arsenal fans, it's fair to say, have not taken all of this well. Chuck all your medals and all your caps and all your pots and all your pans into the biggest flipping dustbin you can find because you've never won any of them fairly. As we can see, Man City supporters on the pitch at the Etihad, that's one fan per Premier League charge. It might actually not be fat. That could just be Chelsea's bench, to be honest with you. Manchester City got the chance to celebrate their Premier League crown with a 1-0 win over Chelsea at the Etihad. The Blues had to give Man City special treatment before this one, and honestly, See, this is the only honour they've shown all year. I've seen more shit in blue here than an American sofa. I swear down the amount of times I've seen this this week. This thing's got COVID-26 in it. This is a World Cup final for bacteria. And it's in Torelli and flew a mini. At full time, and emotions were high. I'm Eric Laporte was in tears because of it all. Boss, imagine you played for Chelsea. Enzo Fernandez is somewhere suffering with actual chronic depression. Lampard was just happy to see his former club win the league. Pep felt bad for Mikel Arteta after being his former assistant. I'm really, really, really sorry. I didn't realise that it was... I'm sorry. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's not a funny situation. But to be honest, if I'm Mikel, I'm just sneaking back for the celebrations. Edison brought out the blue trim this week and still had a better one than this Don. This was Jack last season. Today I feel Grealish. The real Jack Grealish, though, was a little bit distracted by it all. Oh, well. Jack! Congratulations! Bless him, his brain honestly reckons he's still in year eight. But Erling Haaland was there to tell him what he really thought. <laughs> A beautiful, beautiful love story. Meanwhile, sharing the love as well was this Man City fan and Julian Alvarez. Alvarez! 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 Yes, yeah. Alvarez! I love you, Alvarez! I love you too! Crazy to think that none of this would have happened if it wasn't for Kim Kardashian supporting Arsenal. To be honest, the universe saw her and Eddie and Ketty are in the same room and said absolutely not. Happy days for Man City and for Nottingham Forest as well who stay up. What a great achievement from the newly promoted sides all round. All three of them staying in the Prem. But one young fan at the Forest ground was getting a little carried away. Now, next we head over to Spain for a much more serious story. In Real Madrid's 1-0 defeat to Valencia, there was a late altercation between
between both sides, and it was sparked by racial abuse from Valencia fans aimed at Vinicius Jr. Vinny was red carded after his reaction, leaving Real boss Carlo Ancelotti furious. Now the reaction has been volatile. La Liga's president Javier Tebas has been pathetic, calling for Vinicius to be careful in his criticism for the league. Meanwhile, Valencia's president refused to believe that any of the racism actually happened, when it's quite clear what those fans were chanting. <laughs> There were even chants of Vinicius die. I mean, his reaction was honestly gut-wrenching. But it was, of course, an outpouring of emotion and support. Real wore Vinicius shirts before their next league game, and the entire stadium rose to applause him in the 20th minute. Valencia players such as Yunus Musa and Dia Carbi have come out to support him, and Carlo Ancelotti used an interview as a chance to explain how bad La Liga's racism problem is. Meanwhile, Rio Ferdinand has done more for him than the league has at all. He tagged Marcus Rashford, who was down to help before realising a chance child wasn't involved. Jack Grealish had a tough time trying to read that entire paragraph. And Rio tagged the late Pele, hoping for him to get involved too. And he actually responded. I can't believe it. Someone said he was dead. Hi, Pele's ready to make a sensational return if he sees a Brazilian winger in trouble. Now, Valencia promised to ban any fans that were racist in the stadium. So, all of the fans then. But it's crazy that Vinny was the only one sent off here. Once again, the only one being punished here is the victim. It thankfully has been received and the VAR official involved has been sacked. He explained the decision in the car on the way home. What was he even doing in that VAR room? Uh, yeah, Juan, have you seen the, the, the headlock that Vinny just got put in? Yeah, nah, hang on a second, mate. I'm a little bit busy right now. Just got to type my password in. Valencia's goalkeeper came out to support the Brazilian on Instagram, but here's what he actually meant with the caption. Look, I'm just kidding. But what he should do is apologize for fighting Vinny and backing those racist Valencia fans originally. He's from Georgia as well, and is a friend of Kavicha Kavaric-Skelia who posted on Instagram giving his support to the Georgian shop stopper. Dave was not too pleased about this statement. I Listen, good luck making a diss track for his Wi-Fi password of a name. Meanwhile, Kavicha's in the studio preparing to fight back. At this age, how would a man still hate him? This is now a fifth official incident of racism against Vinny here. Honestly, just leave. Then what has Spain even left with? Some were calling for him to move to Italy instead to avoid racism. He'd be better going to an EDL march. Effigies being hung, racist chants, two foot challenges. At the end of the day, provoking has no role in any of this. No level of flair or chat from Vinicius Jr. justifies any sort of racism full stop. And the fact that prominent officials and former players at La Liga think that that's the case shows that there's a long way to go. Now back in England, and United have been linked with a sensational move for Neymar. You know what that sounds like? content. This would be crazy. Could you imagine Neymar a northern accent? He's got more of a chance of translating the jet that flies him there. Scott McTominay's gonna have a hard time trying to speak Argentinian to him. Uh... Dos, tres, cuatro uh, times. Meanwhile, his interaction with Jaden Sancho is going to be hilarious. Ele parece o Munya Chihuahua. Uh, yeah, so he said you look like Munya Chihuahua. Right, okay. I mean, that seems unnecessary. What did he say about my football ability? Esse homem é uma desculpa terrível para o um humano. Sua temporada deveria ser descrita como um crime de guerra e eu vou bater na tia dele. Yeah, uh, so he said your shit. Tyrell Malasia will be absolutely done for after one training rondo trying to stop him. United fans will be mesmerized watching him before remembering that they have to be Ronaldo fanboys instead. Nah, and I'm, I'm tripping. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yo, fuck this nigga. Ronaldo better. Ronaldo better. Sorry, nigga. This would be unreal for the culture, to be fair. His sister to Manchester? Listen, Haaland's transfer reveal was on a sofa. Neymar's the casting couch. Wait, hang on a second. Why is it blue? On the pitch, a Manchester United managed to slap Chelsea, um... 4-1. Honestly, pretty low scoring when you consider it's Chelsea. Liverpool fans were hoping that the Blues could do some sort of miracle to give us Champions League football, but that hope faded away pretty quickly. Well, I mean, it evaporated at precisely the point that Mikhailo Mudrik decided to tickle the ball wide. Was there no blood circulation in his ankle or something? I don't know what was going on in the first half because no one could keep their foot in. I'm pretty sure Conor Gallagher was in a beta squad slip and slide video. I've got to say at 4-0 down, I felt Chelsea's tweet about the situation was a little bit harsh. And after Kai Havertz added another three minutes to his miss compilation for the season, Chelsea did get one back and claimed the we scored more than one Norwegian man trophy. One Brazilian could be arriving in the Premier League, but another is leaving in the form of Roberto Firmino, who bidded farewell to Liverpool fans with a 90th minute equaliser v Villa. There was a Liverpool party after in which he had to give a speech to the squad, but he couldn't do it as he refused to look at the paper. I'd like to thank, ugh, fuck's sake, man. It was a 
heartfelt message from Aston Villa's Tyrone Mings, and the heart that felt it was Cody Gakpo's after this karate kick to the chest. Aston Villa could be on a European tour. Mings himself will be struggling when asked where he's flying to. Go over to Italy to buy the shoes. Yes. Where? Madrid. Meanwhile, if the villains were to get the job done, joining them in Europe are first of all Brighton after a 1 1 draw with Man City, secured by our first goal of the week from Julio and CISO. Oh, it's fabulous! A strike to get you up off your feet! My Brighton's head of recruitment is back at it. He's, He's done it! it again. That is a fact! You fucking little bum! Levi Colwell tweeted out to say he was enjoying Brighton's celebrations whilst his parent club was losing 4 0. It's a sh How's reward for Levi? Meanwhile, during the celebrations at full time, and Danny Welbeck and Nciso were practicing their wrestling moves, and Newcastle booked their place in the Champions League with a nil-nil draw v Leicester. Joe Linton was very pleased to be in Europe's elite competition. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jacob Murphy was still flabbergasted at full time. What's this like? I got no words for it. Who'd have thought it? Now, over on Instagram, and Chelsea's Mikhailo Mudrik posted a video on his story of a man working out at the gym, but his trousers were too low so you could see some cheeks. He was then called out by TikToker Joey Swole in the maddest crossover of the year so far. So you see that man at the gym working hard, trying to better himself with a trainer. He's in an embarrassing situation where, yes, he's a little exposed, and you decide, hey, let me take a video of it to post on social media to make fun of him, all for attention. Pardon my language, but what the fuck is wrong? With you. 100 million pounds and his most memorable moment is getting into Instagram beef. Draco Malfoy's in the mud here. He's gonna kill me. Mikhailo was even angry at the man when he saw him go to the treadmill before him. This fucking fat old prick, mate. He's putting on pounds again as well, you know. And cracks are really starting to show in Chelsea's dressing room and clearly in the gym as well. The thing is, this man has had more of an impact on Chelsea than Mikhailo has. And fair play to him. He's, look, he's just trying to better himself by going to the gym. I hate people doing this sort of stuff. Wait, hang on a sec. If we go to an alternate angle... Oof, Kai, listen, can I just buy the weight loss instead? At Man City again, and there's the revelation that Erling Haaland plays Minecraft. You can't defeat me. No, I know, but he can. I see, I knew his outfits made some sense. Manuel Akanji's gonna be bemused when he asks Erling to put in a block and the Norwegian whips out a crafting table. Elsewhere, and Jack Grealish has been trying to learn Mandarin. It's just like that. C-H. Chun. 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 But uh, he can't speak English. Who thought he was going to be able to do this? Get ready to learn Chinese, buddy. And after being asked what his goals were for next season if Man City win a famous treble, Jack's boss, Pep Guardiola, had a simple response. He scored a goal against the Spurs away. <laughs> Possible? <laughs> Here we have him next season when they score 110 points in the league but draw nil-nil away at Tottenham. But at Spurs and it's all falling apart for them after a 3-1 defeat to Brentford that sees them drop to 8th in the league. Tottenham's lap of appreciation is not going to go down well with the fans. Nice to see you Meanwhile, Harry Kane's lap of appreciation looks a little bit different. There's no way he's staying. He's giving a goodbye speech as we speak. All right, so we know how much this game means. With Christmas, three point. Why is my face wet? Now, a tweet that I've seen doing the rounds this week comes from this account here, saying that the only thing men can organise is five a side. Bold of you to think that we can even do that, especially when our star striker's waking up at 2.59pm for Power League at three. Meanwhile, we've all got to come to the conclusion that it's three a side after all of us went out till five the night before. But we lived the dream. Meanwhile, there's the development that Gary Neville has discovered what a holiday is. But what you can have is mini retirements during the year, and that's what I've tried to do. I don't do it very well. For instance, this weekend, I'm going to Spain Friday till Monday morning. I call that's like a mini retirement. I'm basically taking it, you know, I don't think about work. Now I will. But basically, right, so instead of dying, I have like these mini deaths every night for like eight hours and then wake up again. Maybe you should have applied this logic to the Valencia job. At Leeds and Sam Allardyce found a fiver down on the touchline and decided to offer it to the fourth official. So then basically, I gave him five quid. Meanwhile, at West Ham, and this is kind of a development of a story that I told you about last week, but after their Conference League semi-final win against RZ Altmar, the Dutch side's fans were trying to get up to West Ham players' families and cause them grief. Well, in the end, they didn't, thanks to a hero called Nolsey and his mate. These two West Ham fans managed to fight off all of the AZ Ultras and have been rewarded with 
with a hero's welcome from Iron's fans and free tickets to the final from the club. I that Chelsea fan from earlier in the seasons outside Stamford Bridge as we speak, trying to scrap his way to a 23-24 season ticket. Now, in Italy and Juve have re-received a points deduction, this time minus 10 from Serie A, dropping them down to 7th place. This is in relation to financial breaches that were uncovered earlier in the year. They originally got a minus 15 deduction. Honestly, at this point, working out their season is like a game of Sudoku, mate. And they were 3-0 down to Empoli at the same time. Two hours of misery for Juve, but they are still in the UCL. Just the, the wrong one. Paul Pogba will be jamming to the anthem in the physio room. But in the here and now, and Roma are in another European final. In the second leg, they had zero shots on target v Bayer Leverkusen. 28% possession and still went through. Jose Mourinho is at the wheel. Empoli's Liam Henderson doesn't care one bit about Dusan Vlahovic's price tag. Yeah, it's a shithousery award for the Scot. Meanwhile, what about this for a story? Shout out Domenico Crescito, who was subbed on for his final appearance for Genoa in the 93rd minute and then scored in the 95th with the last kick of his entire career. What a way to wrap things up for the Italian. Now, it's been a dramatic week in Germany as well as Bayern may well have bottled the Bundesliga after losing 3-1 to RB Leipzig. Thankfully for them, Borussia Dortmund are Borussia Dortmund. Now, genuinely, with one game to go and two points behind, this might be done for Bayern. This tweet for Sebastian Haller's Dortmund goal shows that they are enjoying it a lot. And Nkunku will be a hero for Dortmund fans too, with his goal and balloon celebration. The Bundesliga is the only league in the world where you can pull out a smart whip halfway through. Delhi Ali's on his way over there now. This is clever though from Nkunku, because he can't sign for Chelsea if he's in A&E with a lung condition. Julian Nagelsmann is loving life watching this capitulation. Meanwhile, there's further Bundesliga news that there may well be a split in the German pyramid. This following a failed investor plan that may well now see Bundesliga clubs exit the DFL and found their own association. Kind of like when the Premier League broke away from the EFL back in the 90s. Bayern Munich breaking away from the entire division because they lose the league once. I can see what they're doing. I can see it. I feel it. I can... He's cooking. It's a German Super League boss. This is crazy. Poor Bochum are going to be devastated when they realize that only the big clubs are welcome. I don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected. But I wasn't. In Spain and Barcelona continue to celebrate their La Liga title. Robert Lewandowski, of course, has won his 11th title in a row. And he'll just be relieved that the entire German supply of Heineken isn't getting poured over him. Fucking off that, you Barca goalkeeper Mark andre Ter Stegen has decided to unlock Manuel Neuer mode. Meanwhile, Marcos Alonso is getting touch tight to Takefusa Kubo. <laughs> For fuck's sake, man, where's the aqua fresh, bro? I've been needing this toothpaste for time. Oh, there it is. Atletico Madrid bottled a three-goal lead in the league this week, surrendering second in the table. And with Diego Simeone as manager, he'll be fired up in the dressing room <laughs> at the players. Antoine Griezmann definitely just started playing football manager halfway through the game. Meanwhile, Alvaro Morata missed the team meeting afterwards. Over in France, and Thierry Henry absolutely violated a fellow presenter on French TV. He's definitely just trying to impress Kate Abdo again. One Marseille fan asked his club's president to try and sign Sadio Mane from Bayern. His reaction indicates he's probably not going to try and do that. Sadio is going to be fuming at Marseille officials when he realises they don't want him. Down in the second division and Amiens mascot is ready for violence too. Meanwhile, there was heartbreaking stuff for Isiaga Silla, who played for his club side on Sunday, despite hearing the news that his mother had passed away that day. He decided he wanted to play on, but was left in tears at the end of the match. And I'm sure she'd be very proud that he had the strength to play on and play well. Now then, it's time for your goals of the week. We've already seen one but it's time for a couple more over in Tunisia and at Club African if at first you don't succeed try a bicycle kick Where's the Wajia? Men, uh, Hamdi Labidi, Rai, Amithalia. we've seen a few bicycle kicks in goals of the week recently and we've seen a few halfway line specials too but over in Poland and for Masiai Fios this one takes the biscuit he's about 10 yards inside his own half here at Rangers and with the development that the likes of Ryan Ken and Alfredo Morelos will be leaving the club 
club at the end of the season. Only one player from Steven Gerrard's iconic squad is left. And honestly, I think the biggest loss has been SpongeBob SquarePants. I'll be real. Win a cup one week, lose your job the next. It's been a mixed bag recently for former United legend Van Nistelrooy. And to be honest, PSV letting him go seems a bit rude to me. And finally, how about this skill from a kid who's going to go right to the very top? Project Mbappe, firmly off the ground. If this was my son, he can forget about school. He's going bro. Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. Uh, Pastoresis. Sezonas Pastoresis metais. Kauno Žalgiris. And that concludes the beautiful game. Now in the Netherlands, and there was some great stuff over at Volendam from their goalkeeper, who's tried to play out from the back and got it wrong disastrously. Right lads, it's time for a goalkeeper's intervention. <clears throat> Stop doing this. Now over in the US and at LA Galaxy. Oh no. He's going into some trouble. Bond, he's giving it away. It's been Teke! Well, it's the easiest goal. Fucking hell. Lads, what did I literally just tell you? In Israel, and honestly, this is one of the most shambolic pieces of football I've ever seen. Just when you think it can't get any worse from the goalkeeper's mistake, with the net at your mercy, how the hell are you putting it wide from there, son? I believe this next clip is coming from Paraguay, but please do correct me if I'm wrong. Someone's got to call this game off. This is mud wrestling at this point. So Someone's even come with a diving cap to match the conditions. There were extremely strange scenes over in the Czech Republic when Sparta Prague played Bohemians. A Sparta player went down injured in the area and was waiting to get back up as Bohemians goalkeeper was ready to take a free kick. The Sparta forward got up and sneaked round to try and get the ball, was then fouled by the Bohemians goalkeeper and won himself a penalty which was duly stuck away. In Brazil and defenders are quite literally begging Hulk not to take them on. It seems to have become a regular occurrence recently recently that animals get in the way of matches here on FTW. One species I've never seen interrupt the play is a seagull over in Finland. Don't try any chips whilst this geezer's around. In Azerbaijan now, and a great piece of improvisation here, where a goalkeeper is holding the ball but with only one hand, so an Azerbaijani striker's decided to play to the rules, head it out of his hand, because he's not holding it with both, and slot it into the back of the net. But from 1000 IQ to 1 now, and over in Japan, you Yuki Honda is not going to want to watch this own goal back. Now though for the moment you've all been waiting for because over in Romania and their season has been wrapped up. Romanian legend Georgi Hadji has won Feral Constanta's first ever league title but at the other end of the table Chindia had their first match in their newly built stadium this week. What a beautiful moment welcoming fans to your new purpose built ground. That would be the case if they didn't get relegated in the first game they ever played at the stadium. Not a great way to start things off I'll be honest with you. Now over in Malaysia and we've got a referee here getting himself injured and having to be carried off by players. This might be the most Sunday league thing I've seen. This could be a still nil-nil segment. Over in Algeria now, and this one took me a little while to get, but this could be the worst offside decision I've seen in a little while. There's about three dons offside here. How's the linesman not seeing it? Oh god, my knee again. Oh, okay, Jesus he's, he's preoccupied. So over in Latvia, and we've got the incredible skill required to score a backwards header own goal. Up in the stands, and I'm a big fan of this technique of managing to drink three pints all at the same time. In Portugal, and this under-23s goalkeeper has quite literally been assaulted whilst trying to waste a little bit of time here. Now that it's time for still nil-nil and you guys know the score by now. This is the segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And over in Trinidad and Tobago, how about this for disrespect? A goalkeeper truly believed his opponent wouldn't score a pen to the point where he turned his back on him and he in fact missed the pen. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> on to the weird stuff though now. There's only a couple of stories at the end here, but the first one is ridiculous. Over in Luxembourg, and their season is coming to a close, down in the lower leagues, and Marissa Mersch lost 9-1 this week. Now, it was all calm for them because they've already been promoted to the division above, but the goal difference swing means that their opponent manages to get a playoff spot based on the increase of eight goals. Now, for me, that's got to be prearranged. That's definitely match fixing. But on top of that, Marissa had an open top bus tour for winning the league after getting pumped 9-1. And finally, last week or the week before, I can't remember, I told you the story of a kid who managed to find himself interrupting a Finnish Cup game by cycling onto the pitch. Now, beautifully, they've managed to find this kid and given he went viral across the world, have even awarded him a new bike. Hopefully, with this one, he'll have a slightly better sense of direction. That, though, is going to wrap up football this week, and I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then feel free to slap a like on the video and, of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.